What if instead of providing homeless shelters food and work programs for all homeless people around the country, we murdered them and harvested their organs so that we could save the lives of thousands of hardworking people who needed organ transplants? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But many think that this is what the idea of utilitarianism is all about. Doing actions that have a consequence that will do the most good for the most people. In this case, taking organs from people who do little for their community and giving them to people who do much for their community. But it's not quite as simple as organ stealing as you might think. <laughs> Hello everyone, Thought Monkey here. Today we're going to explore the philosophy of utilitarianism, where it comes from, common misunderstandings, what it's all about, and the problem with it. In the mid-18th century, the philosopher and statesman Jeremy Bentham was born in England. This guy was straight up hippie for his time. He believed in freedom of speech, abolition of slavery, women's rights, gay rights. I mean, this is stuff that some people don't even believe in today. He also founded the idea of utilitarianism, the main principle being that the right action is the one that produces the most overall happiness. But here's where the misunderstandings come in. First, we have to define what Bentham and other utilitarians consider happiness or pleasure. Some might think that this means they can watch porn, smoke weed, and eat Oreos all day. But that would be wrong. You see, the utilitarian has distinguished two types of pleasure, a higher pleasure related to our intellect and a lower pleasure related to our senses. You see, it's not just how much pleasure we receive, but the quality of it as well. Kind of like in life. 10 okay cookies might not be as yummy as one extremely f***ing delicious cookie. In utilitarianism, the delicious cookie is intellectual pleasure and is more highly valued than physical pleasure, the okay cookie. So if you're thinking about watching porn, try reading a book about particle physics or paleomagnetism instead. At the same time, our happiness is not just a selfish individual kind of happiness, but rather communal. Everyone's happiness counts the same, and there's no room for prejudice or discrimination. It is the total amount of happiness that the masses has that counts. Think of it like this. The action that you do that gives the most amount of people happiness is the best action you can do. This might mean that you actually make sacrifices to your happiness in order to make others happy. So to put it in mathematical terms, it might look like the total amount of happiness in all people plus the right action to get the most amount of people happy equals utilitarianism. But there are problems to this idea. First, we don't all agree on what makes us happy. For one person, it might mean having a loving family. For another, it might mean playing World of Warcraft all day long in their pajamas downing cans of monster. And for another, it might mean living in a cave somewhere in India. The second problem is after miraculously coming up with a consensus as to what happiness is, it's even harder to figure out what the right action is to arrive at such happiness. There is a famous thought experiment that goes something like this. There is a train speeding down the railroad. There is a switch up ahead. On one side you have five people tied to the tracks and on the other one you have one person tied down. You are in a position to switch the track so the train runs over the one person rather than the five people. Would you do it? The utilitarian would perform the action that creates the most amount of happiness and would switch the track. One life taken is better than five, right? But what if that one guy was a philanthropic humanitarian and the other five were just apples? Well shit, then you might have some disagreements. Could you reform the douchebags to become better people so that they could do more good than the one guy? Or maybe after this experience, the one good guy becomes an asshole because he realized that in spite of all his good guyness, he was still tied down to a train for some unknown reason and now wants to start living for himself. The problem with this is that in real life, we use utilitarianism in all kinds of different fields and do it to meet questionable ends. For example, in the medical field, we fund research into many minor problems like athlete's foot, when instead, we could use that money to pay for the research of rarer but more serious diseases. In the business world, we make products in third world countries and pay those people essentially nothing so that the masses of the first world countries can buy cheaper clothes, chocolate, and coffee. So in this case, is the suffering of a few thousand slave, I mean cheap laborers, worth the pleasure of millions of Starbucks drinkers? Well, I guess it depends on who you ask. Thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, please subscribe and give it a like below. Also, take a second to check out my Facebook and Instagram page to stay updated on what content I'm working on for my next Thought Monkey video.